In this digital age where kids are online every day, they are more exposed to dangers. From cyberbullying, exploitation, scams, and misinformation, the list goes on and on. So today, I'm going to speak with Dr. Sofakar Ramzan, who is a chief scientist and specializes in internet intelligence. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so let's start off by you sharing just um, what have you seen in recent trends about the dangers in the online use that kids have every day? I mean, from their computers to their cell phones, it's a nonstop connection to online. Absolutely. Well, just on a daily basis, there are nearly half a million online predators who are active on wow. a given day. That means that kids are exposed to all sorts of nefarious activities. And then beyond that, kids are literally spending three months out of the year, according to our most recent State of the Youth Report at Aura, online. It's three months out of the year. And then during that time frame, they're exposed to malicious content. They're exposed to scams. They could be exposed to cyberbullying, online predators, misinformation, addiction-related content. And the list goes on and on and on. We live in a world now where all this stuff is literally in our pockets and our kids can access it on a daily basis. Right. And do you think that danger increases now that, um, or rather the exposure to the danger increases now that school is back in and kids are maybe away from their parents? Why do you think it's important for parents to talk to their kids right now since they're going back to school? The main reason is that we live in an entirely new world now. You know, when we were growing up as parents, it was a physical world. And we built up these things called street smarts. And those street smarts were probably honed over millennia through evolution to tell us when to look for dangers in the physical world. Unfortunately, those same street smarts that applied to us in the physical world are no longer applicable in the digital world. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have to retrain our own brains to recognize those hidden dangers and ultimately pass that wisdom on to our children because we're going online and not fully aware that when you go online, you've got to take a presumption of guilt until something is proven innocent. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And so do you have maybe five essential tips that um, would be useful and really tangible to protect kids online, especially from scams? Absolutely. So first and foremost, it's really important for parents to have a dialogue with their children about online safety and to regularly communicate with them. We live in a new world, and that's going to be super important when you consider the kind of dangers that kids are exposed to compared to what we were exposed to when we were younger. Uh, secondly, we tell parents to invest in internet security technology, typically parental controls as a starting point, so you can monitor how much your kids are going online, put limits around online behavior, because the more time kids spend online, especially if they're engaging in unhealthy activities, that is a set of really massive psychological and social repercussions for children that they may not be ready to handle in this day and age. Then beyond traditional parental controls, we also advise the basic suite of internet security capabilities, things like antivirus software, so that if a kid did click on a link and downloaded some software that was no good for their computer, that can be detected and removed. And then in general, having a conversation on privacy and password management. Most attacks today are typically situated in a place where our passwords are, in many cases, available on the dark web and sitting out there and ready to be pilfered by threat actors and used. Therefore, it's important to have really good password hygiene to make sure you don't reuse the same password across multiple websites and that you update your passwords on a regular basis so that even if one were to get compromised in a data breach, that potential implication could be bounded and limited. Right. And so those are some of the most important tips that I recommend for parents to engage with and talk to about their with their children. Yes. And uh, doctor, we know that AI is playing a very important role right now and it. I think it's in the stages where people are trying to figure out how it will impact kids, um, whether they are learning in the classroom or utilizing AI for research or various other ways. So do you foresee at this time any danger and harm with the inclusion of AI when kids are using the internet? Absolutely. I think AI is a new capability. I mean, AI is, is in a AI as a field in general has been around for decades, but these recent advances have just been mind blowing. And now we're in a world where kids are, in many cases, exposed more to this technology than their parents are. Children have to learn when AI will work, when it will present them with correct information versus misinformation, because that can happen with AI. 
And generally speaking, some of the dangers of using AI for things like school assignments when that may or may not be allowed and doing that correctly and safely and sanely using any new technology. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, technology literacy is as important as other forms of literacy. And it's crucial in this day and age for parents to be aware of how technology is evolving and how those new technologies could be impacting their children on a regular basis. Right. Okay. So it sounds like the AI aspect is more so the risks of plagiarism when it comes to doing schoolwork. But do you see any dangers in AI, anything specifically you can share regarding if AI could um, be a leverage to put our kids more in danger with some of the areas that we spoke about before with cyberbullying or exploitation or anything that they will run into like that? You know, the biggest thing that I really worry about is today you have cyberbullying, you've got online predators and online predators typically try to pose as younger kids when they're first engaging uh, with their victim. And that's the kind of thing that typical adults have a hard time doing, because as you all know, when you see a kid typing online, what they type looks like gibberish compared to what an adult knows. Mm -hmm. They use terms like Ohio and Skibbity and Riz and all sorts of interesting terminology <laughs> like that. What we're finding out is that AI is actually surprisingly good at sounding mm -hmm. like a kid. So if I put in an adult sentence, uh, the AI will actually translate that into Gen Z language. And I think that could be a powerful tool in the context of online predators who are trying to really hook their victims and provide them with some false expectation around who they are on the other end of that connection. Yeah, no, that's really good. And so when you recommend parents giving talks um, or having those talks with their kids and giving solutions and really answers, where do you recommend they go for those resources? Because, you know, as you said, technology is ever changing. And so parents want to make sure that they are well versed on the topic to be able to educate their child and also identify some of these red flags. Well, Aura, we actually set up a website, uh, digitalparenthood.com, that provides a one stop shop for resourcing in terms of all the things that parents could care about when their kids are going online. We recognize this problem is not just about information and content, but about forming communities so that parents can share notes to talk to each other, to understand from others and experts on how to navigate the digital realm. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend digitalparenthood.com. Uh, secondly, and of course, I'm a bit biased in saying this, one of the easiest ways to facilitate a conversation about going online is through parental control technology, because that enables parents to get visibility into what their kids are doing. And that can be the basis for a deeper conversation. So our goal with parental controls is not just to put a bunch of restrictions in place and make it hard for kids to go online. It's really about providing and enabling information to be exchanged so that we can facilitate a dialogue between parents and their children. Mm, and as you are um, a chief scientist and you're really deep into the intelligence world, I'm curious what you have seen and what we can expect perhaps moving forward. One thing that we know is technology is not going anywhere and it's only going to increase and get stronger. Um, do you feel that there will be a shift where kids are maybe disconnecting um, from their devices more, or do you see this just getting worse and worse as far as that um, addiction to technology and devices? You know, what's interesting is that we've seen actually both trends happen in some cases in parallel. We're seeing more and more kids these days getting fed up and exhausted with the constant digital buzz in their lives. Mm. And so we are seeing on the one hand, a lot of kids going through essentially digital detox, really moving their phones away and not staring at their phones constantly. On the flip side, the other dangerous trend we are seeing is the increase in the amount of addictive content that's available online. Mm. You know, many of these companies that provide content, their goal is to keep you hooked and to keep you sitting there on that screen. They literally measure how many minutes their consumers and users spend online on those sites. And so as a result, the kids are exposed to really dangerous content. The algorithms that are used to pick that content may not be thinking about the ethical implications of the content that they're serving. Mm -hmm. And they're not necessarily considering whether or not that content is being viewed by somebody who is underage and may not be able to appropriately ingest that content and handle it safely. Right. Yeah. All right. Such good information. Thank you so much, Dr. Ramzan. We appreciate of it. Course. And if you like more information about the resources you can obtain and really learn as a parent how to have these conversations with your children, we'll have that website listed below and I'll see you after the break.